Uh, next up, we're going to hear from Dr. Patrick Smith, postdoctoral fellow in humanities entrepreneurship at the City University of New York, and founder of the IOTA School, and will speak to us on bringing accessibility to research outputs in general beyond the research program. Thank you. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I am chief learner at IOTA School, and we're um, a consultancy focused on infrastructure development, um, curriculum development, and accessibility. Uh, it was really interesting to hear Breen talk about um, the 100 books um, and, and why she went into math. Um, and I'd say my story, could this, this could basically be called how to deal with having to read 100 books. Um, so uh, I actually, you know, I always, I, um, I have retinitis pigmentosa, which is a, um, a genetic eye disease and it's progressive. Um, so I was diagnosed at 14 when I had relatively um, uh, normal vision. I couldn't really see the board and so on, but, but um, the, you know, at 14 I was diagnosed and I read my, um, my uh, I read many books, you know, over many years and I read my last print book in 2007, and I remember it wasn't the most cheerful book. It was Dr. Faustus by Marlowe. Um, but but um, by the time, uh, so, and people ask me, uh, I have a PhD in English now, and people ask me, well, why did you go into, um, into English and why did you pick that? And I basically think I wanted to be paid to read books, um, which is a, uh, maybe, uh, maybe the best, a good motivation, maybe not a good motivation, but but um, in, uh, I really want to focus on this period, which is a pretty critical period for me. Um, and from 2014 to 2016, which is a while ago now, um, where uh, um, I was faced with the task of, uh, of having, uh, we had an orals examination that was part of the, uh, go moving for essentially from the early part of your PhD program to the, to the, uh, to the next stage, to the dissertation writing stage. And I had to read a hundred books. Um, so you, you prepare three lists. There are 30 something books each. Sometimes people do significantly more number books than that. And you have to read them. And at that time, I'd started using a screen reader in 2010 or so, like four years before. I was, I was pretty you know, strong at, at reading uh, uh, these books if they were in an accessible format. However, um, the, they were frequently not. There were a few that were. Um, I would say, let's say maybe 15 or 20. Um, and then the rest were either in print or they were um, they were in formats that were encumbered by DRM. Um, and unfortunately, you know, I, it's not enough to read the books. I have to take notes and I need certain systems to take notes and to do all this work. And um, and and if it, the book is encumbered by DRM or it's in a proprietary database, with, on an inaccessible platform, which many or most of these books were, or they were in print, I couldn't read them. And so um, there, so that was going on in my life. And my vision was deteriorating pretty rapidly. Um, and then at the same time, I, um, I it, which was a funny time to be getting into it, but it's kind of, it was kind of lucky um, that I had taken on a fellowship that year in 2014 um, to, uh, to like, it was a technical fellowship. I became a digital fellow at the Graduate Center, which seems a little odd. Maybe it seems odd for an English, um, English PhD student, but, but, um, but, you know, and at that time, I always kind of like computers. I always liked making websites and doing some other technical work, but I had, I started learning Python programming and Python programming was really a, a revelation. And it really changed the way I thought about about all of this, this challenge of reading all of these books. Um, and so, but the, one of the first projects I did with Python was that there was a website that had information on it. And it was kind of in the sense, technically accessible, but as a practical matter and having to use it every day, it was very difficult to use. And so what I did was I wrote a, a program that would, that, you know, it, it pulled down all the information, all the websites and it reordered it, reorganized it, and then spat it out into more accessible HTML that was more convenient for me to use. And it really felt tremendous to, to, do, to do that work and to be like, wow, it, using this computer and, and accessing the site doesn't have to be as unpleasant as it was. Um, and so I started doing that for all sorts of things. So I, I um, one of the things I did was I jailbroke my iPhone, which let me 
Um, right back then, Apple was slowing things down. I had a really old machine. The screen reader were kept hiccuping and stopping, and I, I, I added a functionality to restart the screen reader by pressing the the two volume buttons at the same time. And I, um, I started um, going onto you know more technical parts of the internet where there were these um, shadow libraries. Essentially, I won't mention names or anything like that, but essentially places where you could get books for that were already scanned. You know. Um, and, and I also started teaching, I taught, started teaching programming and I found out I really, there were a lot of people out there that were well, not just blind people, but, but kind of everybody, um, work, especially in the humanities where people maybe didn't have the background, the technical background, but they needed to do stuff with the technology for their communities, for people. Um, and so the, the, I, I did a lot. I, I, uh, helped run these programming like boot camps or intensives I created all of this curriculum and you know all of this was kind of a, in a way it was kind of a distraction from what I was doing in the PhD but it was also kind of my PhD sort of became about that in a lot of ways and I wrote a dissertation on hack set what I call hack accessibility or your or ha making things accessible whether <laughs> that the thing wants them to wants you know whether the thing you know make it accessible whether or not the people running the thing want it to be or not. And um, and I found myself uh, and, you know, and it made me really care about helping people to access information, you know, and, and is, you know, both through teaching, but also through creating platforms um, that host accessible curriculum or um, some of the projects that I'm working on now, which is projects to either make um, notebooks, data science notebooks more accessible. I mean, I use data science I use Jupyter Notebooks and I teach data science. I use Jupyter Notebooks in my teaching and they're not, the, the editor is not at all accessible. And um, and that's really, really unfortunate. Um, or to create, um, to we're currently create at the Graduate Center. I'm working on a project to create a system to that City University of New York to, um, to create pop-up websites that will allow, um, you know, workshops, to be uh, to be taught uh, in places that don't have many resources, um, and so I, I just really briefly like to say some of the things that I feel like I I think are really important from from the journey that I've taken. Um, one is that I think it, it's really important that we have um, blind people, people with disabilities, people from marginalized communities, learn serious technical skills, and also be the people who are building the platforms that are in the room not just people who are consumers, um, but people who are actively involved with the creation of the tools and the platforms and the formatting and the standards and all those things. Um, something else is, I think, which is, I think has been a theme here is that some of the uh, formats that we're using are pretty archaic, um, you know, and I think, you know, we've, we've talked a little about PDFs, but, you know, getting to thinking about not maybe even HTML and possibly even beyond HTML. Some of the work we've been doing is trying to come up with semantic ways to with the at Space Telescope Science Institute with this Notebooks for All project. It's coming up with semantic ways to to do to represent new formats like uh, data science notebooks, which which are you know they're uh, they're complete they're they're a new problem semantically. Um, and then finally, I'd just like to say. Um, you know, I, there's a lot of people on this on this um, uh, on this call, which is truly amazing. And there were a lot of people at this day of accessibility that we ran for Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore last week. And I I want to say, if you if you go sit through if you sit through all of these talks and you and you listen to us, and um, it, it puts you in a position where you might know more about these topics than um, than people in the room when decisions are being made, you know, or, or you'll have a chance to help a uh, disabled student who's trying to make it in STEM and, and, you know, speak up, be an advocate, you know, it's, it's just, just because you're new to accessibility doesn't mean you can't make a difference or to make people care more about accessibility. And it really matters for, for people who want to become scientists, programmers, researchers, all those things. It really matters that you speak up. So thank you.